We've been bringing you details of a special Paul Brady concert for which uh, we have an exclusive early bird ticket offer. Now, Paul turns 70 this year. On the 26th of September in the prestigious venue Cadogan Hall, Chelsea, there'll be a, a celebratory event. You can visit uh, www.thelondonretrofestival.com forward slash coming hyphen soon or call 07748 657 400. Coding the code SPECTRUM. You'll be contacted back. Now, there's a 10% discount on the very best seats in the house. Details on our website, irishradio.org. Now, Paul Brady is an iconic figure in Irish music and on the world stage. As a singer, composer, and multi-instrumentalist, he crosses musical boundaries incorporating folk, rock, blues, traditional Irish and classic styles into his repertoire. Now, online now, I'm delighted to welcome Paul uh, to tell us about the musical journey. Paul, a very, very good morning. Nice to speak to you. Nice to speak to you too, Jerry. Uh, Paul, you were raised in uh, in Straban. What fired your interest in music in the early days? What were your influences? Well, uh, my mother and father were both very musical and, and loved music. They both sang and uh, played a bit of piano, although they weren't ever sort of formally taught. Uh, so there was always a musical kind of background in, in, in the house with me and... Um, my mother claims that when I was 18 months old, I was able to sing the air of a famous hit at the time, a song called Now Is The Hour. <laughs> but I actually uh, wasn't around to prove whether she was right or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wasn't old enough, I suppose. Wow. No, it was a, de- it was a golden era for music. And you were actually in college in Dublin playing in bands in the, in the 1960s at a time when musical giants like the Dubliners and the Clancy Brothers were in their prime. Uh, yeah. do, do you have fond recollections of that period uh, of your career? Well, you know, I suppose I didn't think of it as a career at the time. I was in Dublin uh, supposedly to go to college, although in all honesty, uh, I didn't spend a lot of time uh, studying. <laughs> uh, my first interest when I was there was in, in, in rhythm and blues and, and soul music, uh, and I was in a few of those semi-pro bands around the city, bands like The Inmates and The Cult and, and a band called uh, Rock House, another band called Roots Group. Uh, but but the folk boom, as you say rightly, was was coming in in a huge way at the time, and the Clancy Brothers had be, had made a huge splash in America. Bob Dylan was coming along, the Dubliners uh, in in Dublin, and I, it was inevitable that I that I would get swept up in that excitement, and I joined the Johnstons. Indeed, now you, you took, that was when you took up music full time. Uh, now you joined the Johnstons, recording yeah. seven albums. You lived in both London and New York. Next came a stint with the. Uh, Irish folk supergroup Planksty. Now, you collaborated with Andy Irvine in an album, Andy Irvine and Paul Brady, uh, still sought after and uh, regarded as a groundbreaking work. How did uh, the solo career the solo career come about after that? Well, I mean, the Planksty thing was, 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 I was in New York at the time and the Johnstons had sort of fallen apart, as bands do <laughs> eventually. And I got a call from uh, Liam O'Flynn, the piper in the band uh, Planksty, to say that Christy Moore had just left and would I come back and, and uh, join the band as singer. So that was a great boost to me at the time. Um, uh, and when I got back there, I spent a couple of years with Plankstey, and then when Plankstey, that mark of Plankstey, split up, I, as you said, I spent, uh, I made an album with one of the Plankstey members, Andy Irvine, uh, and that was very well received. And recently, actually, we've just finished a tour in Ireland of eight shows uh, for the 40th anniversary of of that album. It doesn't seem like 40 years ago. <laughs> But after, um, after a couple of years uh, with Andy, um, I began to uh, not want to tour as much. I had just got married. I had a couple of young kids. And uh, so Andy and I parted ways, and, and I gradually began to want to return back to the music that I had been playing before I, I got swept up in the Irish trad scene. Right. Now, having been involved in traditional music for many years, you must have relished the idea of sort of expressing yourself in other musical genres uh, after that. Yeah, well, you see, that's what it was. I mean, I, 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 you know, people, people who came to me from the traditional music era uh, in the 70s weren't aware of anything I did before that. Uh, but, but like I said, I was always interested in songwriting and in rock, blues, and pop. And throughout the 60s, like everybody else, I'd been a fan of the Beatles and the Stones and, and all that great music. So I just wanted to get back into that again and see. I mean, Jerry Rafferty was a big influence on me at the time. He just 
had come out with a song called Baker Street, which is which we all know as a classic now, and that kind of spurred me on to see if I could write songs myself, and I kind of started to move out of the traditional music scene and and uh, try to write songs uh, in in my own contemporary style. Right now, the content of the 1981 Hard Station album that uh, surprised some. Why was that? Well, because it was fundamentally different to the work I'd been doing for the previous decade. I mean, I had the I was in Planksty, I had the album with Andy, I had my own solo folk album, Welcome Here, Kind Stranger, and people kind of had got used to this is what Paul Brady is. But but the Hard Station album was a complete break from that musically, and uh, I mean, my the people who came to my concerts weren't surprised because over the previous over the couple of intervening years, I had been introducing new songs into my uh, into my concerts, my own songs. But the media seemed to be taken by surprise, and they, they started kind of trying to compare it with a Dylan at Newport sort of thing, you know, when Bob Dylan went electric at Newport and outraged all the folkies. They tried to compare my Hard Station album with that uh, kind of uh, drastic move by Dylan. And uh, it's really... That's why people were surprised, I guess. Right now, you you never abandoned the uh, the trad roots, as shown by the reworkings of tracks such as uh, Pontchartrain and uh, the Homes of Donegal. No, I mean I've, I've always loved trad music and song, and in fact, on 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 my new album, which is due out in August um, this year, I have two tra- traditional songs on it, two Irish trad songs, and so I always uh, kept that world of music open to me and. Um, I've never wanted to sort of just do exclusively one style of music. Right now, you 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 definitely are an enduring artist, as uh, famed for live performances as for your prolific uh, recorded output. Uh, now, you have an album you referred to there coming out in August. What inspires you to continue to produce new material? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it's it's what I do. I mean, and I never I never thought that uh, what I do as a job, you know. So I never I I never think of retiring. I mean, I know sort of that, uh, you know, I'm not a kid anymore, but I still feel very much like I'm in my 20s and 30s, and I still love music as much, and I still have as many musical ideas coming to me. And, uh, you know, why why give up if you don't, if you, if you still enjoy doing stuff, you know? Well, indeed. Now, it's, it's evident that you've, you've definitely got a passion for what you do. Also, significantly, you've written for artists and collaborated with so many uh, to great critical acclaim. Uh, can you share uh, one or two highlights? Well, like, there's been a lot of artists who have recorded songs of mine. Uh, like, I suppose, most famously, people like Tina Turner and, and Cher and, and Bonnie Raitt and... Uh, um, Phil Collins record, uh, sang a song of mine on his world tour, and um, I mean, there's there's so many of them I can't really bring them to mind, to be honest. Wow. Uh, but but I also had great fun, you know, writing with. I mean, one of the highlights writing was was with a, a huge hero of mine, that was Carol King. I could hardly believe I was sitting across the room uh, with an empty page in front of me, in front of Carol King, and that was a great highlight. We we wrote three songs together. And um, I have worked in collaboration with, with people like Mark Knopfler, like when Mark's on, on a film score of, of a, an Irish-based movie, actually, Cal. Uh, I worked extensively with Mark on that. And uh, um, I've toured with, with Dire Straits in, in the 80s and, and with Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton has played on my album. I've played on his album. So, I mean, I, I've, I, these are all highlights, certainly. Yeah. Well, that is uh, that is certainly some some list. I mean, it, 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 absolutely phenomenal. Now, further diversifying, you wrote the theme song for the ITV series Faith in the Future and went on to form your own record label, uh, PB Music. Now, uh, later, RTE televised a six-part series, the Paul Brady Songbook. Uh, did this uh, spark great interest in your back catalogue? My my back catalogue is always uh, in people's collections. Uh, you, you know, I'm not the sort of artist where people have rushed out to buy to buy a new album just the minute it's it's, it's out. You know, <laughs> my my records stay around for a long time, and they keep, and they still sell uh, and are played by people. You know, decades after they came out. So I guess it just still keeps going. 
Right now, since uh, since then, your output has included a studio album made in Nashville, and in uh, 2015, the release of the 2001 Vicar Street Sessions and an anthology of uh, rarities and uh, and outtakes. Interesting times. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've been in the business 50 years now, and and um, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened to me in that time. You know, I mean, and uh, I suppose at this point in time, I kind of don't. I, Although I'm I'm still working as hard as ever, I don't really see myself as in the business at all, in the sense that sometimes the business puts deadlines on you and insists that you do this at a particular time and, and not do that at a particular time because it it may or may not work out. Uh, I I don't really care much about those considerations anymore. I just make the music I want to make. I do the concerts I, I want to do, and I don't do the ones I don't want to do. And uh, I'm, I'm a very lucky man in the sense that that I, I have the freedom to I, to do what I want to do when I want to do it. That's uh, that's that's excellent. Now you go from strength to strength. Many of uh, many of our audience saw you uh, take centre stage at the 2014 Michael D Higgins State uh, uh, Visit concert in the Royal Albert Hall. Now you give a memorable performance of nothing but the same old story. It was a an ultimate celebration of Irish music and readings televised on RTE and broadcast on BBC uh, Radio Four. Did, did you enjoy the night? I did. It was a high pressure night, I must say. Like it was, the, there was a lot of expectations on everyone. And it was live, of course, which is also an extra uh, pressure. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the song I sang probably was, uh, to some extent, controversial uh, in terms of the relationship between uh, Irish and British people. And so uh, I was maybe a little concerned that that might have uh, uh, soured its response, but not at all. Um, people seem to enjoy it. And... Uh, the, the collaboration I did with Joe O'Connor, uh, who introduced the song, sort of set it up very nicely. Right, now, another landmark event for you will be the Cadogan Hall concert on the 26th of September, marking a, a slightly belated celebration of your birthday. It's eagerly anticipated. Now, you've often reinvented yourself. What can we expect from, uh, from you in the future? Well, like I said, there's a new album out of 11 songs, uh, in mid-August, called Unfinished Business, <laughs> and that title may may give you a hint that I'm not planning to sort of walk away just now. <laughs> um, so that I'll be doing songs from that, uh, and I'll be doing basically a, a cross section of songs from over my entire career. Uh, I don't like to sort of introduce a whole um, album of new songs to to an audience. I don't think it's fair because I think when people come and spend money to see you like they, 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 they deserve to hear songs they're familiar with. So I will introduce a smattering of the new album and uh, give plenty of old favourites too. Right, now our audience have the opportunity to uh, to see my guest today, Paul Brady, live at the Gadogan Hall, Chelsea, 26th of September. Take advantage of Irish Spectrum Radio's exclusive early bird ticket offer. Visit www.thelondonretrofestival.com forward slash coming hyphen soon. Inserting the code SPECTRUM. Now you'll be contacted with a special email link to buy tickets or you can give a buzz to 077 400 and code spectrum a 10 percent discount applies details of course on our website irishradio.org paul it's been a pleasure speaking to you a true musical legend and i wish you continued success well thank you very much jerry it's a pleasure talking to you too